This chapter will be coming, covering the urinary system, the kidney, and the physiology of the urinary system. So our first slide is referring to the function of the kidneys, and the kidneys are the main excretory organ of the body, and specifically the functional unit of the urinary system. And they have many, many different functions. First is to regulate the total water volume and the total solute concentration in the water and regulate the concentrations of the ions in the extracellular fluid. Also plays a role with acid-base balance. It helps to eliminate certain metabolic waste, toxins, and drugs. And it produces the hormone erythropoietin, which regulates blood pressure, and also an enzyme called renin. And renin, as we'll see later, affects the regulation of red blood cell production and the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Another function that the kidney is responsible for is gluconeogenesis, the formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. And the organs within the urinary system, besides the kidney, include the ureters. They are the smooth muscle tubes that go from the kidney to the urinary bladder, the urinary bladder, which is the temporary storage reservoir for the urine, and then finally the urethra, which is what transports the urine out of the body. So this slide shows the anatomy of the urinary system, and we can see the kidneys are, um, they're going to be located retroperitoneally and the blood source that leads to the kidneys is the renal artery coming off of the aorta. The renal hilum is on the concave medial surface where the renal artery enters and where the renal vein exits to return deoxygenated blood back to the inferior vena cava. And then we see the ureters leading to the urinary bladder. And the urinary bladder is approximately located where the pubic symphysis is, where the two pubic bones form a union. And so a crushed injury, for example, would affect a person's bladder specifically. So the location and the external anatomy for the kidney are retroperitoneally in the superior re lumbar region from about T12 to L5. The right kidney is crowded by the liver, so it's a little lower than the left. And the adrenal glands are also called the suprarenal gland because they sit on top of the kidney. Obviously, the word renal refers to kidney. And as I mentioned, the concave medial surface is where the vertical renal hilum is located. And it's where basically all the blood vessels, the tubes, the nerves enter and exit the kidney at the hilum. So one very important factor that is covering the kidney, important tissue that covers, is pararenal fat capsule. And this helps to protect them. So in this slide, we can see a transverse section on the left showing the location of the kidney. As you can see, it's posterior located. And it's, again, retroperitoneally, meaning it's going to be posterior to the peritoneum and it's protected primarily by these ribs, the 12th rib and the 11th rib above them. So if there's damage to one of these ribs, it could also cause damage to the kidney. Now the internal gross anatomy of the kidney includes the renal cortex first, which is the outer granular appearing superficial region, and then deep inside the kidney is the renal medulla, and it contains cone-shaped medullary pyramids, and they're kind of shaped like triangles, so hopefully that will help to remind you that those are the pyramids. And between the renal pyramids are renal columns, and they're inward extensions of cortical tissue. So, Deep to that, then, is the third major section of the kidney, the renal pelvis. And extensions of the renal pelvis are the calyces. And this is where the urine, the urine flow comes out of. So first from what's called the nephron, which we'll talk about coming up. 
that leads to the renal pyramid, the minor calyx, the major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter, and then to the bladder, and then the urethra. So we can see on this slide, it's showing the internal anatomy of the kidney. So we have specimen on the left and a diagram on the right. So the outer region that you can see in the kidney is the cortex. This is where there's a part of the nephron called the glomerulus. And deep to that is the renal medulla, where the majority of the nephron is. And the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney that forms the urine. You can see that the renal medulla now leads to the calyces. First, the minor calyx, and that leads into the major calyx. The major calyx then is the extension of the renal pelvis, and that leads to the ureter, to drain the urine out of the kidney. This is the freshly formed urine after going through the nephron. So a couple little homeostatic imbalances that apply to the kidney are pyelitis, an infection of the renal pelvis and the calyces, and also pyelonephritis. And this can be very, very serious if there's kidney damage that occurs. And this may lead to a drop in red blood cells, which we know as, of course, hematocrit. So let's look at the blood vessels that now go through the kidney beginning at the aorta. So the aorta is, as you know, the large blood vessel that comes off of the, um, com coming from the heart, leading to the renal artery going into the kidneys. The renal artery then leads to the segmental artery, then the interlobar artery, and this word means that it's between the lobes of the kidney, kind of in the renal column area, if you will. And that leads to the arcuate artery. And the arcuate artery is found between the renal cortex and the renal medulla. And then that leads to the cortical radiate artery. And as the word kind of sounds like, it radiates throughout the cortex. Then the cortical radiate artery leads to the blood vessels that are found in the nephron, the afferent arteriole. And the blood vessels within the nephron go from the afferent arteriole to the glomerulus. And the glomerulus is high pressure capillaries. Then that leads to the efferent arteriole. And then one of two different blood capillaries, the peritubular capillaries or the vasorecta. So what is shown in, these da in this dashed area is the blood vessels that's in the nephron. And the renal pelvis, again, just to um, reiterate, the renal pelvis the, is the, the major calyces are the branches of the renal pelvis. So once the nephron, once the um, reabsorption, secretion, filtration has occurred in the nephron, then the urine has been formed, and the deoxygenated blood returns back to the inferior vena cava. And many of the blood vessels have very similar names to the arteries. There's the cortical radiate vein, the arcuate vein, interlobar vein, renal vein, and inferior vena cava. So uh, notice that the interlobar vein, there's also an interlobar artery, and there's a segmental artery, but no segmental vein. 